Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. Hare Hare. <clears throat> All glories to my divine spiritual master, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. So today is the last day of July 2022, and we have behind us the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And <clears throat> so the Hare Krishna mantra, uh, everyone is familiar with, is very, very popular. It is uh, enchanted by George Harrison of the Beatles, Allen Ginsberg, um, many other famous persons. And of course, it is the essential mantra of the Hare Krishna movement. There is no other mantra of this stature. There are other mantras that we chant, but this is the main mantra, the Maha Mantra. This is the mantra for deliverance, for understanding, for entrance into God consciousness. In addition to the Hare Krishna mantra, we have the spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who delivered the Hare Krishna mantra to us in the West, who explained it, who started the ISKCON movement, who translated many books that support the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, like the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Bhagavad Gita, or Gita Upanishad, is spoken, was spoken by Lord Krishna some 5,000 years ago, and it is the uh, the essential literature of the Hare Krishna movement that explains life in general, that explains the existence of God, the existence of the material world, the existence of the individual soul, the relationship between the three, and how one can revive his own God consciousness. Actually, the Bhagavad Gita is really quite an amazing book because being spoken directly by Krishna, it is different than any other literature. Um, every single verse in that book is, is spoken by the Lord. And <clears throat> so it gives the individual direct guidance into becoming God conscious. Um, and that's very important. It's like the voice within us, the God conscious voice within us is speaking to us through the Bhagavad Gita. Actually, it is said that if one meditates on the Bhagavad Gita and, re and repeats the verses of the Bhagavad Gita, originally in Sanskrit, that one will actually see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavad Gita, meaning he will actually have a direct vision of Krishna. Um, it's really, really important literature for anyone that is looking to advance spiritually, plus it gives a really, really important philosophical foundation to the practice of bhakti yoga uh, you want to have that philosophical foundation as to you know what is what and you know we we want to get we want to get away from this speculative um uh type of, of meditation that we do all the all the time we're always speculating with our mind uh, and trying to figure things out. Well, Krishna consciousness is the opposite of that. This is where we take guidance from Krishna. And it's really important to get into that mode of taking guidance so that the mind will settle down and we start to breathe nicely and we start to hear from Krishna. And in this way, he can reveal himself. This process of yoga is very, very important uh, it is to me, it, yoga means to link with God. So if you just do yoga for breathing, for, for health, um, like that, it won't yield the true fruits. When, however, you add the meditative aspect of yoga and the health aspects, because we are disciplining our mind and body in a regulated way, which is very healthy, but when we we direct the attention and the focus and the uh, what we call 
it's at a sacrifice when we direct all of our senses and a purpose of our yoga to Sri Krishna, then we can achieve an, a deep understanding, a deep internalization of Krishna consciousness. Uh, what happens in the practice of Krishna consciousness is there is a cleansing going on. As we are daily repeating the names of Krishna and doing devotional service to Krishna, all of the different elements of the body, sometimes called the chakras, the different uh, fields of where the body's energy takes place, are all becoming cleansed. And this is very important. So the, the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita describes that there are three levels of cleanliness of the body, the mind, the consciousness. He calls this the, the Lord calls it the mode of ignorance, goodness, and passion. Or goodness is satagun, ignorance is tamagun, passion is rajagun. Um, and so these three different modes of nature are always affecting us due to this karmic attachment that we have. It's an endless array of attachments that the mind has and causing us to have interface with the modes of nature in three different ways. The Lord in the Bhagavad Gita, he categorizes each mode and the symptoms of each mode. He also talks about the foods in each mode, the activities in each mode. And ideally, we want to come to the mode of goodness because in the mode of goodness, knowledge illuminates. We can begin to really illuminate our understanding of things. We become indifferent to attachments. We become less attached. There's less obsessiveness going on. We're more independent in our thinking. We're more simple, yet at the same time, we're deep. And we feel joy because in the mode of goodness, you feel the 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 um uh the craziness or the um movements of the material nature have calmed down in your mind and your body so you're not running here running there doing things dishonestly trying to gain things dishonestly holding on to things that you don't need to hold on to suffering more than you need to um all of this negative energy is removed in the mode of goodness and then when one chants the Hare Krishna mantra, you see the Lord himself is in the mode of super goodness or Sattva, the transcendental platform. So nothing negative ever touches him. He is the essential embodiment of energy. He is the cause of energy and he is one with that energy. And his energy is Sattva. It is supremely good, always good always radiating goodness, balance, prosperity, knowledge, happiness, joy, everything that we can imagine that's good is always coming from Krishna from moment to moment. Um, so in order for us to have a realization of that, we ourselves, by the process of Krishna consciousness, need to rise to the occasion. Krishna is not going to meet us when we are in the lower modes. We need to rise to the higher modes, which is where we become more detached from material life, more introspective or more realized of our internal self. And then it becomes much more possible, easier, and it makes a lot more sense that we are a part and parcel of God. We can feel our own radiation radiance manifesting in the mode of goodness in relationship to Krishna, who is a source of our goodness. So in one sense, Krishna consciousness, I mean, it's very straightforward. It's very, very uh, attractive philosophy. Um, anyone can follow it. It's not difficult. It's a joyful philosophy very beautiful it does bring one exactly where it's meant to bring one but in another sense it's also mystical because when one develops a sense of 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 contact with krishna you no longer are 
um, concerned with the analytics analytics of knowledge and trying to figure out God. You're no longer trying to figure out how can God be God? How can God be the source of everything? How can there be a God? These are questions that arise from our um, attachment to material life because we see in material life how things begin, that things end, we observe. And so through our senses, we observe the beginning and ending of life. But we can't use the same logic in understanding God because we are a part of God. So how can the part analyze the source? It can't. The part is a part of the source. All we can do is regain our relationship with the source, but we cannot overly analyze to figure out the source. It's really kind of a waste of our brain power. So really, it's mystical. We give up this analytical aspect called gyan, and we just enter into the bhakti aspect, which I say is mystical, where we develop a relationship with the supreme truth. We don't question it. We accept it. We imbibe it. We become one with it. We develop an attachment for it, a love develops an appreciation for the absolute truth what he is who we are in relationship to him what we are in relationship to him lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said we are a chincha beta a beta tatwa the word tatwa means energy so all energy is inconceivably and simultaneously one and different from the absolute so we have an extremely close relationship with the absolute and although we are different we are also one now the krishna conscious philosophy does go into detail about that oneness and different aspect for those of us that are interested in understanding deeper then the oneness and different aspect is really nicely explained um, in the phyllis in the different shastras and the different scriptures of the Hare krishna movement we are we as living beings are not the material body we are actually spiritual beings that have a spiritual body that we cannot see right now. That spiritual body is in the likeness of the Lord and is manifested as we develop a proper attachment and understanding of the Lord. It's not something we have to make up or conceive erroneously or in some artificial way it is automatic because as we become conscious of the lord's position or i should say the lord's form automatically through the chanting our form is manifest as well as an expansion of the lord's form so there is a connection made therefore on the transcendental level between the Lord's form and our spiritual form. This connection is the essential um, love and mysticism and genuine um, and amazingness <laughs> that exists. The Lord is amazing and full of love. And when we understand that we have an eternal body that is connected to the Lord, that becomes for us, the living entity, amazing, and we develop this love for the Lord. So we're basically seeing the Lord in action 
on the transcendental platform. And this is really what religion is striving for. All religions are striving for this. They, however, don't have a good grasp of what it is they're striving for. Whereas in Krishna consciousness, it is crystal clear. There is not the slightest bit of misunderstanding or speculative information or knowledge. It is a roadmap with exact GPS instructions, which makes it remarkable. So I would say that for anyone who feels an inclination to God consciousness, because God works in mysterious ways, every single being has some interest, some more, some less, because he resides within everyone. And so the level of interest varies, some much more like a burning interest, and others very little. Um, but for those of us who are like what we call the low-hanging fruit, there's really not a knot of need to raise your vibration, to question, you know, to, to raise your interest level because it's already firmly there. So in a sense, you're going to find this video, you're going to hear what I'm saying, and you're going to respond and say, yeah, that's for me. I want this. I want to learn how to develop my spiritual vibration, my spiritual personality, my spiritual form in relation to Sri Krishna specifically. That is the bhakti yoga process. In this age of Kali Yuga, we want to worship and meditate on Sri Krishna, who is the one that reveals us our form and our relationship with him through the practice of bhakti. So there are many of you who will watch the video and hopefully in, take up the chanting of Hare Krishna, maybe make some inquiry into how to practice, follow, read the Bhagavad Gita, and become an active devotee using your life, your life heirs, that which is given to you to develop your own individual eternal relationship with God. Um, so this is a very, very, very important thing. Very important. Um, it, it is not something to be glossed over. And in the mode of passion and ignorance, it's very easy to gloss over the mode of goodness. Passion and ignorance seem very important. They take up a lot of our time. We want to hear about celebrity gossip. We want to watch TV nonsense. We want to go to the bar and drink. We want to chase women and men. We want to chase money. We want to always chase pleasure. So it's like a very fast-moving, illusory vibration that hides our purpose. So that's what I mean by, say, glossing over. You start chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, your mind is not going to be glossing over God any longer. Your mind will start to stop all of this nonsense and become very absorbed, deeply absorbed in the chanting. And that's where you're going to blossom. Your second life is going to grow. Your spiritual life is going to develop. And once that takes place, you're going to lose interest for the lower qualities of material life and blossom. And the good news is, and the real, the real, I, I think the real reason that we should be involved in Krishna consciousness is because not only is it the real purpose of life, but those that will absorb their mind, follow the practice, the guidance of Lord Krishna will not take birth again in the material world. They will not take on another material body. There is no reason for a Krishna conscious person to accept another material body. 
because the only reason we accept the material body is because of karma that comes from the lower modes of nature. When there's no longer any lower modes of nature and our mind is absorbed in, um, in Krishna consciousness, there's no reason any longer that we will accept the material birth. Our next birth, if you will, will be with a spiritual body. And that will end definitively our material sojourn or our material journey. It's over. And we don't will not come back again to the material platform. So that's really good news. It's really, really good news. Um, you don't want to stay on the material platform. It's not, it's a very tenuous platform. It's not a good place to be. Um, everyone should be very develop an interest just even by hearing, knowing the pitfalls of material life should be enough reason to develop a strong interest in Krishna consciousness, which is practically speaking, and I will state this for the records, the only method, sure method of deliverance in this age of Kali. There is no other method, none. So you can try, um, but there's so many individuals that have come from different faiths and come into Krishna consciousness and found um, the fullest uh, representation of religion that they could find anywhere on the planet. So um, I'm going to stop here. Any questions you may have, leave it in the comments section. I'm also going to uh, develop a telegram page, a group, so that we can continue our discussion on Krishna consciousness. But um, the most important thing is that anyone can take up the chanting um, and and develop into a spiritual being. That's the good news from Lord Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna.